All right, back in the locker room again. Uh, so the uh, two sessions ago, we covered power, which is our, our hang your hat on play, our base play, our favorite play, the best play in football, all that kind of stuff. And, and we went over that and built the, the complementary plays or a little bit of a system that goes with power. And then the last session we talked about uh, scream, uh, which is a complementary complementary play to power, but also has kind of its own uh, complements and becomes a package uh, in and of itself. Um, so today we want to talk about uh, power versus scream. Um, we obviously love power, but it's not the only play in football. And uh, uh, and when you run power and when you want run scream, what are the strengths? What are the weaknesses of these two different uh, uh, plays and their complementary packages? Um, so uh, just a quick refresher. We characterize, we're a gap scheme. We do uh, most of our uh, blocking schemes by gap control, meaning the spaces between the linemen uh, versus just the defenders on the defense. Um, and so with uh, power, we, we call that a backside gap scheme. We are on, on, on the direction of the play, we're gonna crush down all the gaps towards the backside and they're gonna bring a guy, a big guard, to come rumbling and stumbling around from the backside to give us an advantage and numbers on the front side to lead the play uh, up the hole. Um, sometimes we bring a tackle too and make it stronger. Uh, sometimes we'll lead other players up through the hole. Even the quarterback at times can, can serve that role. So, um, uh, so it becomes, a, a, as, as per its name, a very powerful play by running it that way. And it's relatively easy, and we can be very aggressive off the line of scrimmage to smash down those backside gaps away from the direction that the play's going. Um, you know, if we get a little bit over aggressive perhaps and somebody leaks through frequently, we can get them washed to the backside anyway just by their momentum. Um, so, um, you know, power is a, a, a play that we feel real comfortable running, you know, anywhere, anytime. Um, so with, uh, with scream, it's also gap control, uh, run blocking, but we're trying to uh, uh, gain a gap. So we're, we're attending to the play side gap and each lineman is trying to actually gain a gap. Well, sometimes that's easier said than done. Um, it's also a little bit slower developing play, um, and it also hits a little bit more at an angle. So it is a play that's a, you know, a little bit more at risk uh, potentially for one of the linemen getting his door opened, uh, and just by the length that it takes to develop and the angle of attack, it's a little bit more at risk uh, for uh, a loss of yardage. And, and we don't necessarily accept that. We, you know, our, our concepts with, with both uh, power and scream are that we're not going to lose yardage. We're not going to do a lot of bubbling off these plays. We're going to um, you know, really attack the line of scrimmage and make sure we get positive yardage and stay on the chains. Uh, 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 as we prefer to be a run-based offense versus a throw-based offense and staying on those chains, uh, not getting behind uh, distance and uh, on the downs, uh, you know, we can be pretty effective. Um, so having said all that, um, I think to get into power versus scream, when and where kind of stuff, we really have to understand a little bit more about the nuances of blocking the two uh, different uh, schemes. Uh, you know, in our past session, we kind of blew that off and said, hey, it's just, you know, backside gap, frontside gap, uh, kind of get after it. But there are some things that we do uh, scheme wise, particularly around where we find our double teams or our combination blocks, where we pick up a, a D lineman and press uh, 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 the block back and then pick up the linebacker a little bit later. Uh, off of that uh, double team. So I want to cover that because it, it, it actually relates to our decisions about uh, uh, you know when, why, where to run uh, certain plays or certain uh, schemes or, or, or packages. So uh, let's go up to the board here. Um, so we've got up here uh, put up a different front than we kind of showed before. We were mainly working against an odd front but it's nice to see an even front every once in a while. 
So this would be considered a 43 front with four down linemen and, uh, and three uh, linebackers. Uh, the shades of the linebackers and uh, the coverage you can change. And we are six to this side and five to this side. Technically, this defense is a five and a half, five and a half. So we have advantage to this direction, but they could rotate the safeties and they've already slightly shaded to our strength uh, to, uh, to compensate uh, uh, for that a little bit. So um, let's, uh, let's go into how we block this uh, versus power. So we know our rules are we're gonna smash down the backside gap. So let's start at the center because this is the easy one. He's got a nose guard that's basically threatening his backside gap. It is advantage to this guard is shaded to the gap on this guard. So he's just going to take his uh, backside gap and smash that down that way. Now we come here and we've got this shade here. Uh, this guard's backside gap is open. So he's got an open gap. So he, he doesn't have an immediate threat. So he can help. This guy with his gap, this guy technically is shading our tackle's gap. So what we're going to do here is, is he's going to take a little sort of power step into his gap, keeping his eyes in the gap, looking for anybody penetrating. Uh, and then he's going to go ahead and rip this guy and get half of them. Uh, and he's going to stay on that block as long as necessary until somebody comes to threaten him. Uh, this uh, guy, this is technically in his gap, so he's going to just take his regular uh, gap step and turn and, uh, and get him at that angle, okay? You know, the, the, the logic used to be, well, we need to get hip to hip. The way you uh, defeat a double team uh, is to, uh, you know, is to, get, uh, is to get hip to hip. And so a lot of people would work to get hip to hip almost prior to contact. We don't do that. We want to get contact and we want to create a big impact and a big vector to start this guy uh, moving. Okay, he is attacking uh, though with his eyes here uh, to this backer. So what, what we actually envision instead of him taking a flat step in and coming hip to hip, uh, with his guard is he's going to go ahead and get this guy at a side vector because these linemen, their strength is, if you look at them, I mean, you know, it's all in their butt and their thighs, their legs, and uh, when you uh, hit somebody in the side, they don't have that same leverage. So we're going to try to uh, 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 sort of friction and lift him here and then get him in a side vector where he doesn't have as much support and then allow these two guys to take over the block and move him. Uh, and as they do that, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see them try to work their hips together after contact. But we want a significant impact there. So now these two guys, you know, they have their eyes in their gaps, but they're both on this guy, at least momentarily. And if this backer uh, plugs, and we pick him up with our guard, and if this backer happens to scrape, we'll try to pick him up here, and the, and the guard will carry on with, uh, with that block. Okay, so that's this outside shade and how we're going to manage that. Now we've got this uh, tight end, we've got him with an inside shade. So uh, uh, technically, he has this option. He can go, well, I block my inside gap, I can block this guy down, okay, so, uh, and we may do that if he shades him heavily to the inside or if they move him even down into here and perhaps bring this guy up, then we would clearly be blocking him down. But if he gives us this, this shade as an end man on the line of scrimmage um, with, let's switch to red here with uh, a guy out here kind of shading there, we actually may take this guy and tell him, you widen, go get him. Our fullback will kick him out as end man uh, and we'll, we'll run it that way. Uh, basically, we get a kind of a combination scheme here where between our tight end, our, our, our fullback, big back, blocking back, and our looping guard coming around, they're gonna take care of these three guys one, one way or another, but we want this nice sort of massive combination block to start movement and open this up 
and create that moving wall that seals everything uh, that away. And then just to finish back here, we're gonna, he's got B gap control. He's got to scoop this B gap up. Uh, he's got to take a, a kind of a, a loopy, uh, but not a pull, just to get leverage on that and scoop it. So that, that's how we would handle this front as it exists, okay? So let's, uh, let's uh, take uh, some of our markings off here, and let's talk about what happens when they give us pressure, okay? Uh, and that's going to change things dynamically a little bit. So let's say they, they come up and um, they're going to give us man coverage, um, and they're going to rotate this guy, going to rotate this guy here to come off the edge and they're going to reduce their end down into here and you can see the gaps starting to identify where they're going to go. They may be man free in this case um, and we'd end up with you know safety here manned up on the tight end. Uh, these two backers are going to be responsible for uh, the two backs coming out. So now uh, if, we, if we take a look at that um, we've got uh, a gap pressure here, a gap coming off the edge. We've got a gap pressure here. This guy walks up, he's taking this gap, and, uh, and uh, we've got the nose coming here. Perhaps this guy might spark inside, and this guy might come around, and we've got a little blitz coming on us. Uh, so that, that becomes a little bit more challenging. We don't have the bubbles uh, necessarily, and, and uh, and by rule, we've got an all gap front technically, so it's just straight base rules, gap it down. So power handles this really well. You know, he gaps down there, this backer comes, he gaps down there, this guy's in his gap, he gaps down there, this guy's in his gap, he gaps down there. You know, fullback's got the kick here, and we're still able to bring our guy around to lead it up. Challenging block might be right here, but we should be able to pick that up. So uh, even if, you know, even if they hit every gap, uh, we still have the ability uh, to block this uh, just fine. In fact, and sometimes we really love it. Sometimes you can get a mismatch, you know, in a gap, but uh, we really love it when people want to uh, uh, just all out blitz us because uh, if we go to either our, what we would call our, our middle zone or wedge type play, uh, or this we can handle all the gaps and a lot of times it's you know a 50 yard touchdown when they get uh, kind of desperate so um, so that's cool uh, so let's uh, let's put up the same front but let's uh, let's go to you know kind of our screen concept a, a little bit more so let's uh, go ahead we'll leave a tight end in uh, but we're going to spread it out a little bit and we'll stay under center. Uh, we could be we could be in the gun as well uh, with this. Oh, we flipped offense and defense. Okay, that's cool. So now we just put Mike Leach on uh, offense. Um, so we got our nose here and tackle and okay. We're actually balanced in our front now. Um, and so they're still, in this case, would still be favoring calling strength to the tight end and gapping uh, in, in that uh, direction. So we're going to say he's, you know, shaded here, he's shaded here, he's shaded here, and he's shaded on the outside there. So, uh, so now we're going to go with, the, with the, the screen scheme and how we would attack that. Um, so um, we're trying to gain a gap. And so uh, the, the tight end in this case is going to take his uh, gap step and he doesn't have anybody floating out here that he has to take off and get. So off of that, now he can give a, a, a rip to this guy and take half this guy. We're gonna take our, our gap step here. And again, we're gonna do the same thing. This is not an aggressive forward step uh, like uh, with power where we're really coming off uh, at about a 30 de degree angle in our first step. This is, a, this is a 90 degree angle, a very flat step, and now we're going to convert it to 30 degrees. But conceptually we have 
technically the same kind of uh, a double team or combination block going there. And he's going to keep his eyes here and he's going to keep his eyes here. And we can handle these guys depending on which way they go. Um, so now this guy here, he's got a guy who's got a gap advantage uh, or has got a shade advantage to him towards the gap. So that's challenging. He's got to win this block. So he's still going to take his flat step as a power step to gather a power base. And then with his second step, he's going to hit this guy at 30 degrees. And he's basically now one on one trying to drive this guy in this direction. We're trying to get movement in that direction, okay? So that's a little more challenging when the ball is going out here and this guy actually has the advantage on him. It's still a, a doable play and given that we're trying to drive that way, uh, we're in the vector of the run and we are trying to get him a little bit uh, off of his power base to knock him sideways. Now the center's got to snap and gather here and he's got to be able to uh, drive through and make sure this guy doesn't spark around. And now he's in a little bit of a chase position trying to get to uh, pick up a backer. Again, not horribly advantageous uh, for, uh, for a, a center, but not impossible. And again, if he can get the backer, he doesn't necessarily have to reach him, but he's got to be able to convert him to that angle and push him deep and wide. Um, and then we're gonna do the same thing here that we typically do on the back side. This is, this is another disadvantaged spot and we're gonna actually try to scoop this one. We're gonna get a little better leverage angle and try to actually reach there. And we're also gonna try and reach the B gap. If nobody's there, we'll work up to backer, okay? Again, our back. His aiming point is to C-gap, and he's trying to stay in that same vector. And he's, now there's no fullback leading this, so he's just gonna be reading this tackle. If the tackle's uh, butt is pointed at him and we're getting a uh, push in that plane, uh, he's gonna stay on his vector and keep driving that way. If by chance we end up with uh, a door being blown here, he's going to have to then cut it back. And probably the bigger concern would be if this guy starts to leak this way, we need to stay in contact. It's hard to make a tackle when people are in contact, so don't give up. But off of the handoff, if we start getting that leak there, we need a jump cut back into here and we still got to play. So that, that works okay. Um, so, you know, so that's a good play, right? I mean, that, that's uh very uh, feasible that that's going to work pretty well. So let's take some of these marks off and let's talk about what happens if we get an all gap blitz uh, with this front. Uh, let's say they go ahead and reduce the end down and he's coming this gap. They bring him up here and he's coming off the edge. Maybe they're running the same man scheme with him there. Uh, walk this backer out of the box to here. And they're looking at something like that, okay? Uh, this guy's gonna penetrate this gap. Now all of a sudden this backer's hot here and we've got uh, this guy here. Maybe they'll spark that down like that and leave this guy hanging off the edge a little bit. Um, so now we have no uh, uh, kind of double team at, at point of attack. Um, everybody is disadvantaged in their gap, right? everybody's trying to gain a gap. And this one's particularly hard for the center because uh, he doesn't have as much wiggle room to gain that gap. So he's got a, a, a huge job to do, but everybody's trying to gain, and trying to gain, trying to gain. And then in this case, these guys, you know, ideally we drive this way, but if we're getting leaky, that can, that can be a little bit of a problem. So, um, Again, we're, we're, we're going to try to just take our guys and run them off as best we can, but there's lots of room to have a door opened up and one of these guys to pop through and make a mess out of this play. And uh, so that's what we need to conceptualize is when is it that we can have that kind of 
uh, gap front. Well, you know, a team that loves to blitz and take risks, uh, we also tend to see this type of thing. Uh, the closer you get to the end zone, uh, you also tend to see this like inside your own 10 when people say, hey, they probably won't score a touchdown. Let's take a, take a chance of really burying them in a hole here. Um, and, uh, and if you're in your four minute drill and you're trying to kill a game and these guys got nothing to lose, you're probably going to see this. Okay. Now, the other time that people feel more comfortable giving you this kind of a look or just basically not even necessarily blitzing but as the field gets shorter, so as you move into the red zone and the end zone uh, is, uh, the back of the end zone is another defender. Remember the sidelines are defenders and the back of the end zone can become another defender when the safeties don't have to worry about dropping deep because the back of the end zone is defending, helping them defend the field. The safeties can come up and sit in here and where the little running creases occur, you know, in, in, a, in a, uh, a scream or play side gap uh, type play where you can get a jump cut to the back side, now you got safety sitting right in those running lines. And so it becomes harder uh, to uh, have positive uh, plays in, in that situation. So this is kind of a demonstration of that. If we're sitting here on... Um, our own 25, right? Uh, and we've got all this field for the defense to defend. Uh, what are they gonna do? They're gonna be a little less likely to compress the front and blitz all of the gaps, uh, potentially give up a, a big play. Uh, and they're much more conscious of the massive amount of territory they have to defend uh, in the passing game. So you can see we end up with a walked out outside backer here to help defend uh, the spread. Uh, we end up with these backers being a little looser and a little bit more likely to backpedal out to cover the pass. Similarly, this, this guy who looks like a potential red, uh, edge rusher has to worry a little bit about the, uh, a coverage responsibility. So there's a lot more green to be taken advantage of uh, you know, from the from the, the the twenty, maybe even you know the fifteen. A little back in here, it's a little more scary, perhaps, to get a gap blitz kind of concept going. And you can pretty much run the field uh, until you start getting in the red zone, and pretty soon that field gets pretty tiny. The zones get smaller. The ability to run around and man gets tighter. The safeties and linebackers are closer to the line of scrimmage if they're not actually gap blitzing. And it becomes more and more difficult to get a play side gap scheme off without getting crushed. And th this is the phenomenon that you end up seeing, you know, every Saturday and Sunday is that these teams put up enormous yardage that are running more of a spread system, an air raid type system. They put up enormous yardage between the 20s. And then they start to struggle down here. And I think it's one of the reasons you don't see air raids. You see air raids leading the nation in scoring and leading uh, the nation uh, in, uh, in passing uh, yards and, you know, things, things like that. But there's some definite drawbacks when you put all your eggs in this basket uh, and being able to win consistently and actually be able to win uh, championships. Um, so... Um, that's kind of what, what I want to point out here. So let's, let's go over to this little column here and talk about this. So if you're running power, you can run it anywhere in any time. You can run the whole package anywhere in any time. Um, it happens to be particularly, uh, a particularly good package when you're in short yardage and you're cons you want to run the ball and you're uh, concerned about uh, the backers uh, uh, blitzing the gaps and the safeties playing tight kind of thing. Um, you can still handle that, and sometimes you get an enormously big play, but you can usually at, at least get two to four yards on a play. It happens to be very good in a four-minute drill when you want to run the ball to kill the clock and your opponent knows you're going to run the ball to kill the clock, uh, and, uh, and they're going to be... 
uh, playing up tight, if not blitzing your gaps. So it's very effective in, in, in that situation. Well, what's the downside to the, the power package? Well, to really run it well, you need to run it with two backs. Um, and that, you know, in, in a four minute drill, that's nice to have two backs in in case you do want to throw, you've got better pass protection. Uh, and you know, you, you, can, you can handle that uh, situation, but there are, are, are times where you, um, you know, may not want two backs in the backfield. You may want to have the field spread out a little bit. Uh, you know, for example, in your own two minute drill, that might be advantageous and you may not want to be running pure, you know, power stuff. And I should say the skill set for power also gives you a great um, a package out of a single back set to run pick and pull plays. Uh, they're essentially the same. There's just some slight rule changes, but they're simple. Guys get it really quickly. So the screen package is good if you want to be in a one back or a spread offense. Uh, it's it, um, it's it's good when you're when you're running from your 50 to your 20 and you've got lots of field and they're not going to tend to bring too many guys up in your gaps. You're going to get those good combination blocks. You're going to get the bubbles and the cutbacks to run through. So it's real. It's good between the 50 and 20. Where it's really good is from your own 20 to the 50. You know, from from here to here, when you've got all this field to defend. Getting into a screen package uh, just makes a ton of sense. I, you are going to find the creases to get up in there um, and uh, taking a little longer to, to find them and hit them and even being at a little bit of a uh, more of an angle um, is going to be advantageous. Plus, this you know nicely sets up all of the stuff that can come when you get in a gun or even a pistol, uh, preferably the gun, I think, uh, for pass protection, but you, you know, you've got your, you, you, you've got your inside play and your outside play. You can run a little pick and pull inside here as well. Uh, and you've got a nice, uh, uh, quick passing game, quick screen game. You got a lot of stuff going to take advantage of all this field space available to you so um so it's really good between uh your 20 and the 50 and then it's really good in the two minute drill but as we said uh from the zero to ten so down here coming out you know that's just not what you really want you you want to be able to get yourself some room you want to get you know at least a yard but preferably you know four yards of crack um, and, uh, and maybe a really nice play action pass down there where you've got two guys in the backfield to help with protection uh, is, is great in this area where people like to kind of tee it up on you. Um, so I don't really like, I don't like it down there. You can, you can run it, but I don't love it. Uh, and then uh, when you're going in, when you start to get to the red zone, it can get progressively worse as you go from the 20 to the 10 to the 1. Because you can see as you go from the 20 to the 10 to the 1, the field gets extremely tiny. And these pass defenders, they don't even have to drop uh, at some point. You know, they're going to man you up. They're going to give you a lot of gap pressures. You're going to have to get the ball out in a hurry. Um, and, you know, you, my, my attitude is, you know, if I'm first and goal from the 2, I'm going to run it in. You know, I, I'm not going to take three downs to throw two fades and then try a slant and, and feel good about walking away with uh, being unable to run it in from there. But you see that uh, every every weekend uh, because uh, uh, people, um, you know, they, they stay with their rules. And we're not going to get into the rules of, uh, of, uh, of uh, spread offense in this deal. We're just mainly talking about what's happening in the gaps and why... Uh, a uh, zone type offense tends to fall apart in this part of the field. Um, so again, short yardage is another time where people are willing to, to convert, to be able to get the ball back. They're willing to gamble a little bit more. They're going to press the backers, press the coverage up a little bit, and perhaps hit your gaps a little harder 
Uh, and so on short, uh, short distances, it doesn't work. And then this is where it, uh, it's a real failure in the four minute drill. If all you run uh, is a zone scheme inside or outside, so you know, kind of our the outside being sort of the screen concept, if that's all you run, uh, it, when you have a lead and you're four minutes to go in the game and you want to drain the clock and walk away with a victory and this is all you've got, uh, you're in trouble. And I've seen this over and over again with air raid offenses uh, that may have a substantial lead at five minutes to go in a game uh, and with the inability to run the ball and, and pass protect and they throw and they get incompletes, they leave you know a fair amount of time on the clock uh, for the other team to come back and get some scores. So um, you know I think that uh, the the bottom line here is is uh, uh, you know there, there there are probably a few more minuses in in, in terms of uh, running a a, a zone spread uh, concept. Um, but the fact that it can move the ball so well from here to here, you know, it, it is, uh, should be a viable part of any package if you can integrate it um, into your overall system. Um, and then uh, there's just a lot of pluses here to be, you know, I don't believe you can win championships unless you can uh, control the ball, control the clock, which means you're gonna run the ball. And so a power-based uh, offense becomes uh, really key. Um, and, you know, uh, it's, not, it's not that there's anything wrong with running zone, I don't mean to imply that, but I think um, hanging your hat on zone has enough drawbacks that we've, you know, kind of outlined here uh, that it, it, it needs to be a complementary package uh, and that your, uh, you know, the, the stuff you hang your hat on is really the stuff that football is made of is kind of getting after it and running the ball downhill. And that's it for power versus screen. Thanks.